guys, Chris again from Deer Creek Audio. I'm sitting here gazing out my studio window today. We've got four to five inches of snow out there. Underneath it we had some sleet and rain and ice and such, so that just makes it a little worse. However, that means video recording day in the studio. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about studio monitors and why I think they're so important in the studio versus just using earbuds or headphones or hi-fi speakers. But if that's all you've got, that's okay. I, I totally understand that. I understand budgets. We're talking about home studio here. But I, what I want to do is get you guys so you're recording some really good pro sounding stuff, which you can do nowadays in a nice home studio. I've got my studio in a dedicated room in my house. It's in my living room, uh, just like you probably have one in your bedroom or your basement or, or in your living room too, or maybe even have a special building out back. However, let me explain the difference between actual studio monitors and just using earbuds or hi-fi speakers or, he or headphones and why you want to aspire to getting some good studio monitors into your studio. Now studio monitors nowadays don't have to cost a lot. You may be thinking, oh those are special speakers, but they you can get a nice pair for probably in the range starting from about 250 up to about $500. It just depends on what your budget is and what size speaker you want to get. Now I'm using a couple of different sets of speakers here and I'll cover that in another video a little later but I have some JBL 4311 studio monitors I have some smaller speakers to compare my mixes in my little Aratone mix cubes those are very popular speakers uh, both of these speakers are out of production but they're still readily available on the internet you can buy them used and get them for a great price and then I also use a lot of uh, uh, of, of my headphones here. I've got a set of a Sony MDR7506 headphones. Now they're a little bit hyped in the bass end. They're not really accurate sounding but I like them because they're they're very pleasing, they're comfortable and they're a very popular set of headphones. But getting back to studio speakers, the, the idea of a studio speaker is to totally represent accurately what is being played through them. So say you record bass guitar into your computer and you're listening back through your speakers, you're listening to your bass guitar and you want to make tonal adjustments to it. Okay, you're using those great hi-fi speakers that are known for pumping out some good solid bass. In fact, they might actually accentuate the bass to make them sound like they're really full and, and beefy and can, can really kick it out. But when you're mixing through these hi-fi type speakers with the exaggerated bass, you probably are going to have a tendency to want to turn down the bass that you just recorded. So now when I take this mix and I go out and I play it on my friend's setup or I go listen in the car, you go, well, where did all that low end go, that glorious low end that I recorded? Ah, my speakers were lying to me, so I turned it down when I was mixing it. So. What I'm trying to do is show you the importance of having some really accurate speakers that accurately relay what you've recorded. You don't want any exaggerations either in the low end or the high end or, or anywhere there. In some cases, studio monitors may not be very flattering to your music, but realize what you're hearing is exactly what you put into your computer and what you recorded. So if it isn't flattering, well, who can you blame? Uh, you're not putting flattering sounds in. It's kind of like garbage in, garbage out. However, if you can make what you recorded sound very good coming out of your studio monitors, you know that's going to be an accurate representation of what you recorded. When you play it back on your headphones, it's going to sound even better. When you play it back on your hi-fi speakers or in your car, it's going to translate well from playback system to playback system so you can feel comfortable that things will translate well onto other systems. I want to talk a little bit about translating well. I've had these speakers for a long time now. I've probably had them close to 25 or 30 years and so I know what the speakers are going to do. Uh, in other words, if they accentuate an area, a certain frequency, I know that because I've listened to these speakers for so many years that if I do a mix on them and take them out and listen to them in my car, I know that, well, these, these speakers are a little 
they push a little bit in the mid range there. So I'm careful in my mixes that I don't compensate for that. But these speakers are very accurate. They're they're world class studio speakers that when you walked into a studio in the 70s or 80s, you were almost certain to see these very iconic JBL 4311s. I'll get into a, another video where I want to describe more about the 4311s. They're still available and why you might want to pick up on some of these. Uh, I also have another pair of smaller speakers. They're an 8 inch woofer. These JBLs are 12 inch woofers. They're the Yamaha HS8 and these are the state of the art for Yamaha and this compact near field speaker and I'll cover near field, mid range, and etc. etc. That's a whole nother topic. But these are very these speakers were released uh, in 2013, in the early part of 2013. So they're very modern speakers. And I'll I'll do another video on how I'll compare these Yamaha's against the JBLs against my R tones and so you can really understand what's going on with those. They're good speakers and they they're not expensive speakers. You can they retail for about three hundred dollars a piece or about six hundred dollars a pair. Uh, JBL also makes a comparative type speaker with an eight inch cone, the LSR series, and they're very popular speakers. They're even less expensive. I've seen them on sale for as little as two hundred fifty dollars a speaker, and then you can get the second one at half price. So for three seventy five four hundred dollars, you can get a great pair of studio monitors. These speakers that I'm talking about in this range, the Yamaha HSH, which you'll see in my upcoming videos, the R-Tones, these are all meant for near field. You can see how close they are to me. So they're only about three feet away. So I don't need these huge speakers. The manufacturers realize this, that they can go ahead and manufacture a smaller speaker because most setups are going to be more intimate like this, that I can be sitting closer to my speakers and get the feedback from them. I'm not so concerned about room treatment, which is going to be another video, but uh, you can be set up like this and, and just have a, a quality pair of near field, close monitor, close studio speakers here. Catch them for around four or five hundred dollars and you should be set to go. Well that's about all that I really wanted to cover today. You guys keep recording, Keep writing, keep your comments coming, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.